right. First, before we get started, I'm Jake. Um, I work at Penrod, which is a Salesforce consulting company. Um, I do training in a moment there. Uh, I run the Salesforce Static Group that you're in right now. I also run the Milwaukee Dev Group and um, uh, and I'm a Salesforce MVP and other things as well. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and uh, we'll get started now. So today you're probably here because you want to learn about page layouts, hopefully, right? Yeah. Cool. So there's a couple, there's, I, I got a couple uh, different topics I want to talk about. The first one is dynamic forms. Uh, dynamic forms are a really cool feature um, that allows you to basically customize your page layouts however you want. You actually replace your page layout, your detail layout, and you can uh, set up however you want. So um, it only works in custom objects right now. And it's a nice way where you can conditionally show fields or sections. Um, if you can go to any custom object, you can follow the little upgrade to dynamic forms and then you can upgrade it there. Um, I would recommend doing that. And this is kind of what it looks like. And like I said, for each of the fields here, you can set its own UI behavior. So you can make it, you have none, you can make it read only, you can make it required. You can also set your visibility so you can add filters. So you can make things conditionally show depending on other information that's populating. Let me take a little look at the actual, um, what that actually looks like here. So you can see here, I have my, um, this is a custom object I called address. And here are my details page for that. Um, but if I wanted to add in, uh, apparently I need to upgrade to that forms because I didn't finish it last time. So I'm gonna do that. So this is actually how you upgrade dynamic forms. And once you have it upgraded here, you can see that um, that, page, that detail page of that I had, it is now individual fields. And it's got its own little section and you can add sections and fields however you want. So on the, on the right here, we have our different fields. So you can add fields, additional fields. Um, so you can add sections and fields as, as, that you want. Um, if I click into one of the fields here, I can set the UI behavior so I can say it's read only. I can make it say it's required. I can, depending on the, the name, this is a lookup field, so it's only going to be read only because it's looking up to the address, so you can't really change that. Um, but I can, uh, that's actually not, that's not, looking, that's a uh, auto number. Name. That's why you can't modify that. But for the count here, I can say it's required, read only, um, street. I can change those uh, types of values as well. You can also add additional criteria, like say, I only want to show the address name. Uh, I only want to show the, um, I want to show, only want to show the street when the address name is, um, when it contains some particular value. I can say it's not equal to blank. So only show the street when there's an action account. In theory, there should always be, but there's just a way you can do that. You can all, if you have a lot of fields on your thing, you can also create different sections. So like this right here is a section here, and I can say I want to know, um, can add field to this section here. Come on. Oh, there it's fields over here. Uh, one right here. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, but you can definitely move fields around. This oh, because I already have the fields on here. That's why I was doing that. Um, but you can conditionally show the section as well. So if you have multiple sections, you can conditionally show a uh, certain section depending on other values that are there. So it's a nice, a nice way to reduce the amount of fields that are on a page layout for a particular uh, you know, record. Um, and then only show what's actually needed to be shown. So that way when a user comes to the page and then overwhelmed with a bunch of information that you can just show what they need to show at certain times. Um, that way they're not overwhelmed and you can actually take, uh, they can actually use the page alone to fill up the information that's required. So we have the net dynamic forms from, for custom objects. Um, the next part I'm gonna call, I call it actions as page alerts, but any of the actions that you have um, that you create, actions are your buttons, uh, that you create, they have a, in your updates or your renewal, you can actually use those like as fake page layouts. And what I mean by that is I can create a tab and I can take that update action and I can put it in a, 
record uh, detail component, and then I, it will show those fields. So I can have in my standard detail page layout, and I'm gonna actually hop over here because it's gonna make a little more sense over here. So I have my, my details here, and th this is coming from the, the standard page layout like we're used to seeing. But I can come over here to this custom update, which I need to get that spill in there. Um, and if I go back to this tab here, this has got a action. So I just remove this here, and I go over here, and I click on related record. So you're bringing that related record component onto here. On the right side here, it's going to say, hey, what do you want to do? And I can actually say, I want to choose a update action. And I'm going to do the update account information. Um, this is a action that I created. And it's got a bunch of fields on here that I want. Now, these fields may be on the related, uh, on the details portion of your record. But these are, these are just uh, conditional. These are just fields that we want to use that are uh, particular for this particular tab. So I can call this custom update. I can call if. A uh, common one here is I create a tab here for um, accounting. So maybe there's a bunch of just accounting fields on the account that I want to show that's only available for accounting. Um, and then what the cool thing with the tab here is that once I have a tab here, I can actually set uh, filter uh, visibility for any of my tabs that I want. So I can custom show, uh, I can dependently show certain tabs that I want with certain actions depending on who's viewing the record. So if I'm an accountant and I have an accounting uh, page layout here, I could put all my accounting information here and not put it on the information here. And that's just a quick way for the accountant to go to that tab and say, this is, this is the information that I need. I don't have to scroll through all the, all the records to find the information that I want. It's all right here on this nice tab for me. So I think goes for sales. Maybe they have certain fields they want to do for a particular area. Um, if you can do them by stage, I've done that for customers in the past as well. Um, sorry. Uh, and then, so it's just a, a kind of a cool way that we can use tabs and actions to control page visibility and see things all over the board versus having everything in one compact uh, or one huge uh, detail layout where you have to scroll and scroll and scroll and find things up. So you can control your components. Um, don't forget you can also take these components here and put them, you can take the same component here with this action update and put it anywhere on here. I just like to put in tabs because you can label it. Um, but you can label that the component as well. I just Think it looks nicer in the tabs but you can put it anywhere on the page layout. it's just a nice way to condense information it conditionally show things depending on users profiles other information on the record to um, show the data when it's only necessary to show questions so far any of this so you mentioned uh you created an action that you used is that like a uh, a flow based action like a uh a record triggered flow or nope. so it's a simple like here i'll show you so i went to buttons links and actions oh those I, actions okay gotcha yep. and i just i created a uh what did i call this N update a confirmation that's the name of the one i used and right. all it did was um added the layout here and it's grabbed the field that i wanted for that layout you gotcha. will get a warning if you put more than eight uh, fields on here you can put more than eight on there i've done it um sometimes you get some it something takes a little bit longer to load. For the most part, for redoing this, it's it's fine. Um, just don't go crazy with like a like hundred fields because that's gonna break it. But it's a quick it's a quick way if you if, like if you have a section of fields to with a section of fields about you no know, eight fields. It's a quick way to kind of condense one of those sections in your layouts and just put it as a tab to utilize it later. All right, thank you. Yep, no problem. All right. The next thing I like to recommend is using screen flows. And you can use screen flows to uh, create information. So you can like, have a new customer flow built into a, uh, an, uh, an, a screen flow option. I've also used uh, flows as like a pre-validation check, especially if I need to go query records that maybe aren't a master detail. Um, so I have, I've had scenarios where I needed to I wanted to prompt the user to say that they needed to create some uh, related records, um, but we didn't want to force them to do it. We can put a real validation check on there because you no, know, you can't see the record if you can't create a child record for it yet. So what we've done, what I've done is I used, uh, I've used flows to basically send an error message saying, "Hey, you need to create some additional fields." And then I've also been then given the option in that flow to go ahead and create those records that are that they're looking to create at in that 
particular flow at that point. Um, so that's that's cool way you can use flows to make your user and user's life a little bit easier. Don't forget, you can put pictures in there too. So if you want to draw attention to it, you can change the color text. We can put images and you can actually put giphies in there as well um, to draw attention to the actual page um, to see what that looks like. And if you want, I can actually show you on my cells up here on my homepage. I actually have a couple of different uh, screen flows just in the homepage um, just to see what they look like. So you can see this right here is actually a Giphy, and it's just showing pictures of Batman in here because I like I like Batman. If you can't tell by my background, um, so <clears throat> I just I just put a bunch of images in there, and you can just use that kind of cool way to do that. But you can uh, make the the flow also conditionally required. Just remember, it's a component on your page layout, so you can conditionally show any of these. Um, I've also created this new customer flow where I can uh, put my name in here and create an opportunity and boom it goes ahead and creates a bunch of information for me and you can put all these on your page layouts not not just your home page layout, but on your any of your record page layouts as well so now i have my opportunity that i created along with my counter and all that other fun stuff with that flow that i just had there all right any questions around using flows My next big topic here is use tabs. Uh, I like to keep things horizontal. Um, if I come to a page, I want to see what's going to be available to me and my immediate view of the screen. Um, if you if you come to your uh, if you come to your Visual Force, if you, know, if you come to your page layout and you have all your information is just stacked and stacked, and you have to scroll and scroll and scroll. I found most users who won't scroll through that and they'll say, I can't find the information. But if you put in tabs, it makes it a little bit more readable, it's compact, and it's a little more uh, user-friendly versus just trying to scroll things. So try to keep things horizontal on the, on the page. So um, I say don't go over 10 tabs. It's, 10 tabs is the max I would recommend having in there. But I would say you know five to seven tabs is totally fine. And don't forget, you can make them conditionally. So certain stages and opportunities, you may sure show certain different tabs. So you may have a bunch of tabs in here, but they may be conditionally shown um, depending on what stage or other values in there. So um, you may have a bunch of tabs in there, but you can I'd say for the, when the user is viewing it, keep it around the five to seven tabs in there. But you can have more in there if they're being conditionally shown. So this page layout and these tabs which you're talking about. Can they be displayed like based on your role in the uh, in the organization? Yeah. So um, if you on the tab here, um, you can set the filters there to show the tabs there if you want. Also, the actual in individual components you can set uh, filters. So I'll show you a filter here, and I can say. Instead of okay. looking at a record view, I can say advanced, and then I'm going to say select, and then I can type in user, and then I can say that their profile is... All right, so equal. depending upon where they're at, the role hierarchy, then you can designate that. Yeah, you can do profile, role hierarchy, any of the user information you can access. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's kind of a cool thing. Other cool thing is you can do it uh, from by device as well, so you can say... Um, certain, uh, you can say you know, if it's equal to um, desktop or mobile, sorry, um, desktop or phone. Um, so you can also conditionally show things depending on uh, the view of that they're using. And don't forget, I need your page alerts, you can also see what will look like on desktop video or phone. So you can also see what your layout will look like on the phone. So the one, one thing to note is if you have a bunch of components, they're going to be uh, all over the place. But at least if you have your tabs here like this, there's many other things here. You can just actually open them up, and then you can see what they look like at the point. So this is kind of how it would work versus uh, having a scroll. So depending on how your users want to use everything, um, just make sure you play out with the layouts for uh, mobile and desktop, if you use mobile. Any other questions around that? Uh, your visibility there? All right. The next one here is your rich text field. So, uh, what you can use your rich, rich text uh, component on your page layout. 
and I like to u use these as um, kind of the, the again like the, like flows precursors. Uh, but they, let's say like, hey, I want to say that this is an active account in Wisconsin. I can do some component visibility to say the record is active and Wisconsin equals true, and then it says a little message saying that it's active in Wisconsin. Um, one thing to note, uh, you can also use images and GIFs in here like that. I used to put uh, images in there like on when uh, on my opportunities or internal, like when the uh, because when our sales guys would forget to add some uh, fields in there, and then they could be moved to the next stage. So we didn't want to prevent them from moving to the next stage, but we wanted to like, say, hey, you have to fill in some information. We would I would write a little message saying, hey, you're I put a, I put the Giphy in there from Seattle, like you're killing me, Smalls. I put the Giphy in there, and then I would say, hey, you have to make sure you fill out this information. Um, so it's just kind of a, a nice way to draw a graphic representation to that page, and then if you condition it, show it, and then the information is missing. Um, it shows when it's when the information is missing, and then it goes away once the information is populated. So it's kind of a nice little way to make your page pop draw attention to the user, but not prevent the users from moving forward. All right, and then the next point here is path. Path is a good one, especially if you have some type of uh, process that you want to go through that's dependent on some stages. Um, uh, opportunity is the most common one where you have you know, your different uh, stages. Uh, be sure to use your key fields and your guidance for success for those. Just a good use of uh, space and kind of tell you what needs to happen at each of the steps. Um, so you can use this in conjunction with everything. Everything we're doing here, you can use in conjunction with each other. It's not like you have to one or the other. So you can use all these parts together and one, uh, one step here. So that, does this work, it work across all Salesforce products like let's say field service lightning and i've got a, a process for a technician and that process might vary depending upon what the technician is installing at a, at a particular location so it, as long as you've set up the different processes like if you if you have if you've actually set up the pickless field to drive it because this is driven by a pickless field so if your pickless field is set up and it's, it's driven by that yeah you could do that okay so if you if you have a pickless field that's telling you what your steps are to doing for and you have multiple pickless fields for different things, you could drive that. Uh, one thing to note is you can only have uh, your path is driven by the record type of that particular um, well, the record type of the record. So um, if you're and you can only have one path per record type. Um, so if you have multiple record types and they have different processes, that's the way I would go about doing it. So you can have different paths. Otherwise, you're going to be bound by the same path for all those processes if, if they have the same record type. Right. Yeah, that, that would be my concern. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And then the next one I'd like to point out is the highlights panel. If you want to show that those top four fields, it's really important. Um, keep those. These are key fields for the record. Um, Salesforce by default has them, but don't forget you can change which field to show here. By default, it's account type, phone, and parent account. Um, but you can change that information up there that gets shown to whatever you want it to show. Account, typically, you want to leave the name of the, the record at the top, but the other fields you can customize how you see fit. And then the last thing here is if you notice, is I have this little logo here. Um, you can actually enable uh, accounts, and logos, and lookup. Um, so it's account settings only works on new accounts, but basically when you uh, en enable these settings from account settings, the enable uh, automated account fields, uh, uh, enable account logos, um, you can actually do a, it's like a Google search of your record beforehand and it can pull in the image of the logo. So uh, what we can do here is I can go over to accounts and I can click new, I'm just going to grab Salesforce because um, it's there. Um, but so you can see, no, I'm creating a new account, but it's got this little lookup field in here, this little icon. But when I type in here, it's pulling all the different things. I can actually select Salesforce here, and I'll pop up the phone website and the ticker symbol. Um, I need to fill in account source because that's a required field. Um, but this is kind of a cool thing. And then when I hit save, and it creates that account. It pulls in the logo of the account as well, so it's kind of a cool little function that you have to do that. Um, so using the logos of using that functionality is kind of cool. You can turn on uh, just the logo. You can turn on just the sales or the account lookup. I like using both because um, it kind of makes things a little bit easier to do. 
And that's actually all I have for today. Are there any other questions about any of the stuff that we covered today? So, hey, just a fun, fun question. If that logo, let's say, was a GIF, could you pull, do it with a GIF file and have it be animated? I have never tried, but um, I don't think you – like it, you have to have a special permission. I've never tried to upload a GIF as the logo image. I think there, there are limits on the size of the image, so that may be a stipulation. I think there's also a file type limitation. I would have to check on that. I think I know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if you can, but if you really want to, you could also just add a text field that does the same type of thing if you really want it. I'm not seeing anything that's sticking out, saying that you can. Um, I know if you, once you get the permission to do that, that it's limited, which you can actually put in that field. Any other questions? Hi, I have one question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to use um, custom link section, but I want to rename the header. Is, do you know if that's possible or do you have a workaround? So you're talking about... Um, here. Yeah, it's standard. Uh, it's just... Oh, just give me a second. I'm get there. So saying if you get on the page like here, if you have the custom links. Yeah. Uh, this right here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I couldn't find a way to rename it. Looks um, like if you I just. Didn't know if anybody had any ideas? You talking about this section right here for the custom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The header. So, did you try doing what I'm doing right now? What's that? So if you go to the page layout, the page layout like this. If you scroll down here, you hover where it says custom links header not visible. See a little wrench on the bar right here I have? Yeah. You click that, and I should be able to change this. I'm just, just going to change it to the things. And if I want to show it, I hit that detail there, and I click OK. And now it says links there. Oh, OK. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, any of those headers information, um, the little link there is helpful. And if you want to change from one column to two column, right, you have to go ahead and do that. If you want to show up, you have to make sure you hit that uh, detail page. If you want to automatic always show, otherwise it's going to only show on edit. Any other questions? Hi, Jake, I have uh, one question. Mm -hmm. Uh, the layout is uh, left side a little wider column and right side is a little narrower column. And you put the action on the right side and then the, you can choose the multi columns, like a two section on the right side. Yeah, so on the right it. side. Mm -hmm. So when you put the, any action on the right side and then you can choose to line up two columns within the narrow section, is that possible? Because sometimes I see, even if in the layout, I set the two columns, but if I put on the narrow col column and then it suddenly changed the, the one column, maybe I misunderstood the, the function. So when you're adding, when you're adding some action, so or when you're adding the related record on the left side, in on to the right side narrow section like this and then you can choose the how many columns to display is it 
and now it's showing the two columns. Oh, you, oh you're, you're, oh, you're when, asking how to have more columns? Yeah, but the thing is, when you're adding the dynamic form, oh, and then you're making layouts you're and putting onto the narrower section, then if it's retained two columns on the right side as well, is it? Um, so you see if, if, I, if, you see if I take the yeah, dynamic forms right. and put it on the right side here, it's going I think yeah. if, if you, yeah, it's, not only yeah, it's just column. one column on the right side there, uh, two different sections. Yeah. I just, but like you showed me that if you are in the action, then it still keep the two columns as you set in the layout. Yeah. But the dynamic form is still like a one column. Right? Yeah. The, the actions are a little more robust than a wrong longer than dynamic forms. Okay. So you have a little more then I, the the uh, actions a little more feature rich in that aspect, but the benefit mm. here because this acts like the page layout is that you can condition mm. show the individual fields, whereas with the um, action, it's all the fields that are on that action that are shown here because I can mm. conditionally show certain fields that I want. Um, mm. And the other thing is, if you really want to, you could um, you can change your your view here to. One column, just mm -hmm. a single column, two columns, three columns. You can change the layout of how you want this to be set up um, to whatever your needs are as mm -hmm. well. Um, but yeah, with the diamond forms, it looks like that if you take it and put it into the, the far right column, or even if you have triple, because um, mm -hmm. three columns, it's all the, this type of column here. Which if you use the, the dynamic forms, mm -hmm. it's only going to be the single um, record there, the single uh, column of all those records or fields. Yeah, the one of the good thing in classic because the information is really dense and then uh, it's really easy to capture all the information just one one shot but like uh lightning is a bit more spacious and yeah. then too many kind of blank spaces yeah so do you have a do you have any kind of a suggestion because there's a bunch of templates of the layout. This is a kind of a default Salesforce provider yeah. layout. But if you have any cases that you suggest the better to use different types of templates. Yeah. So of, uh... go ahead. Oh yeah, please. It's I was okay. gonna say so when it comes to the templates, it's kind mm -hmm. of whatever you need to you see fit. But one thing I will note is if you notice on this page here, like this, so this is how I'm going to view it. So this is information, the other information. If I come into this account, this is what I'm going to see. I'm going to see this information. But if I scroll down here, uh, you can see all the information sitting in this main section here. Mm -hmm. The one thing I'm cautious of is because right now this says shows details, but if I show like news, it's got this section here. If I come in, this make this like my default tab. Oh, this is actually mm -hmm. a large section. Uh, this is the, it's the custom update here. If I come in here, People tend to forget that they because they focus on the middle section or the far left section, and they forget all these other things on the right. So if you have a lot of things that are stacked, like try to keep the two columns equal, um, mm -hmm. is the big thing that I've come across that because other people lose track of what's on one side mm -hmm. or the other, um, just because they start wrong. Especially on the right side here, um, if you make things, if you put too many things in the right column, and they have to scroll especially if there are things that they need to use, um, that's a good use for start putting tabs in there because you can see you have a lot more real estate with tabs than you do with there because everything on, on the right side is stacks everything on you. So yeah. you can have this really long pillar of all these different components, whereas yeah. you can take those components and put them in tabs in here and still them more user-friendly on this front. That's why I like using tabs because it can, it can control that, uh, that visibility that I see versus um, on the right here, you, they, they kind of get stacked. Other thing, other thing to keep in mind is you can make things conditionally shown. Um, I've had home pages where this this whole entire line here is it's got like fifteen components in there, but they're all conditionally shown depending on certain things um, that needed to show um, depending on the day, depending on the user, all these types of weird things because certain reports need to be shown on certain days. Rather than trying to play with weird uh, uh, page layout settings, we just go went ahead and modified the visibility of the records. Um, there were the, the components that were being shown at that time. Does that answer any of your questions, or did I just make things more confusing? No, no, no. That's a really good idea. And also, the, the, the last thing is when you click the detail tab, and then 
if you click one of the the uh, below section on the right side, I think I can choose the the layout template. Right? Seems like no. <laughs> Somewhere when you click and you can choose the whole this page layout type. I don't know, probably click the the top section. So when you tell me click maybe. the details and you actually want to see the page layout that's tied to the that detail? Not the detail, I think it's the I think it's in uh, I don't know which section if I go to the detail. No. There's a place where I can set, I can choose the template, sometimes three columns in the lightning layer page, or two columns, or just one column that you can switch the, the number of columns to display in, the, in this setup. But that choice is always showing. Mm. So I think I miss where you can change that template. Mm. It's fine. Ah, uh, I think I, yeah, I found it. Ah, oh, yeah, that one. So this template is too many selections, but usually you use the template that we are looking at. Uh, left side is larger, right side is narrower. But do you have any cases which better to use uh, different types of layout or which layout is really suitable for some uh, particular case or, or some samples um, if you're using a different template? So the, I, I don't have any good examples. It's, I've, it's um, always been, situational depending on what's going on i i typically when the only time the only example i can actually apply i just say that take the back action provide is when i when i do case management sometimes i do um i try to look for ones that give me a little more real real estate so like mm. this is a good one for having three regions for the cases because a lot of times when you're, you're working cases, you need you want to have the case in the middle, but maybe you want some of the you want to pull some information from the uh, a contact in here, and maybe you want to see some other related records here. Um, mm. So it's a good way to see the full picture of that particular customer at that time. I mean, you can do the yeah. same thing for uh, opportunities and sell sell uh, selling at that point as well. If you want to, it mm -hmm. depends on how information you want to have available at your fingertips at a given moment. Um, so the more columns you have, the more real estate you have to play with. Um, and you show more things. Um, one thing to note is this column and this column are only going to be single column values and you have actions and then you can have your, your dual column there as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, when it comes to the different page, uh, the, the, which, how you want to choose the template, it's really dependent on the use case of what's going on for that particular, you know, for your users. Like how much information you need to see um, if you have, like I said, if you need to see a lot of information, having more columns is typically better. But if you have, um, if you're if you're just getting started with Salesforce and you you have brand new users or new, new to it, you they may be overwhelmed by looking at this. There may be there may be too much information, so maybe you need to simplify things and I condense yeah. that a little bit. Um, my concept is I typically my users are a little more advanced and they need to they need to see everything right away versus look for it. Um, but maybe yeah. newer users that might be overwhelming. Like, I don't know what to look for because there's so many things to look at. Um, however, having maybe a single uh, one region might be what they're what perfect what you're looking for. Just put everything in, and then you just scroll on that particular region. So it's kind of dependent on your users and the use case of uh, what you're creating for that at that time. Yeah, when I uh, helping the staff moving from classics to the lightning, I, I just want to make it really similar. So. <laughs> People really tend to like to put the some related uh, object links on the top. Yeah. Say many opportunity, many invoices, many accounts, many contacts. It's always like a link on the top. But as you advise, say people, if you get used to, it, and also can handle many information in the one page, and then you can start adjusting. Uh, yeah, uh, this kind of layout. Yeah, a lot of it, it's it's purely um, yeah 
they have to get used to it. And like any new product, it's a little bit of a challenge for people to adopt to it. Um, so what I would say when you when you roll up things, get your users input on what, what, what do they want to see? And they're really pulling one of these, pull this page and say, if you had a look at your data, would you want to see it just like this? Or would you want to see it like this? It, it kind of like point out like, hey, for this, or maybe just do some mock diagrams or like no screen, like not necessarily treat these, but just kind of like do some mock ones. Like, yeah, you would have your um, header information here and you'd have some information here. And then this is where your page details would be. Um, do you think this is something you'd like to see or get their input? And that, that's, that would be a good start because that's also going to increase your adoption because if users are, they feel that their opinions are valued, and that um, it's something that they can use, then the, that they think they'll use, and you're more likely to, get to use. And then they, as they grow along, they may come back like, "Hey, you remember how we talked about this, and we picked that one region? Yeah, we decided that that that's not a very good idea for us anymore. We, we want at least two columns now. So we're going to go head over here. Maybe this is a better option for you." Um, actually, it looks like the, the header two provisions that would give you the if you're using the uh, dynamic form to give you the two columns. Yeah. Um, so it, it may be an evolving process with your users, um, but I would definitely get their feedback. Just don't pick something for them and tell them what it's going to have to be, um, especially if they want to be involved in the process. Um, if you want to make it look like classic, the one region is going to be the way to do it, and then you're just going to put the components where you see fit. And to be honest, when I converted a lot of users from classic over to um, Lightning, there wasn't a lot of options to choose from originally. There was only a couple, and the one region was the most commonly used just because that was the way you could set up the page layout to look similar to the classic layout. Because you, you could put the you could put the page detail at the top and you put the related list the after effects, so it was very similar in that aspect. So that was user friendly for them because that was similar. Um, mm -hmm. But then it was it was kind of interesting shortly after the fact that things started getting moved around because the users wanted to become, I don't say more advanced, but um, they wanted more feature functionality and they're like, this isn't working for us. And then we end up starting moving to more of the standard templates that you see Salesforce offers right out of the box. Okay. Let's see. Thank you. Yep. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, it's good. It's helped a lot. All right, cool. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, then on that note, if there's no other questions, I'm going to say thank you for coming to today's session about page layouts. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. You can reach me on uh, Twitter, or you can also reach, yeah, reach out to me and meet up here. And I'll be happy to respond to you uh, when I get a free moment to do so. All right, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Greg. Thanks. All right.